Okay. So before you start answering a question on the Cartesian plane, very important for you to remember the following. Okay, first sine theta. Sine theta is equal to y over r. Then your cos theta is equal to x over r and your tan theta is y over x. And obviously your r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. When you see a question on the Cartesian plate, those four equations must come into your mind. Okay? You don't have to get confused. Those four equations are extremely, are extremely important. And obviously, you also need to know your quadrants. Okay? Your quadrants are important. So you have quadrant one here, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So your cast diagram must come into your head. Okay? Remember, the diagram is also called a cast diagram. When you've got trigonometric, trigonometric ratios in the Cartesian plane. Okay, so let's answer the question. So we are given that diagram with all the information. The first part says determine with the aid of the diagram. Now the diagram is already drawn for you here. There are some questions where the diagram won't be drawn. You have to draw it yourself. So here the diagram is given. Can we find the value of x? Okay. Now in which quadrant is point t? Mm -hmm. In the second quadrant, right? Now, if I were to ask you, if the second quadrant is sine theta positive or negative, yeah. is cos theta positive or negative, yeah. is tan theta positive yeah. or negative, yeah. negative, right? Now, that's important because if you want to find x, I'm sure you can see that there are two equations in terms of the trigonometric equation that you can use to determine x. Here, we don't have the terminal ray. Okay, in actual fact, you are given 4t is equal to 17 units, so I can put 17 here. Okay, 4t is equal to 17 units, so your r is equal to what? 17 units. And then we don't know x, that's the one we want to calculate. We are given y as 15, so we can use we can use this equation to find what? x. Okay, so on the next page, I'm going to start by doing my calculation. So 5.1.1. I'll just start by writing r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. What is my r? It's 70. What is my x? That's the one I want to calculate. What is my y? It's 15 squared. Now this gives me 240, 289. Okay, that's x squared plus 225. So your x squared is going to be 64, so x will be plus or minus 8, okay? There are two values of x. Now you have to decide now which value is appropriate for point t, okay? So if you go to the diagram, right, x is there. We are in the second quadrant, so x is negative. You have to use common sense, okay? <laughs> Therefore, x is equal to negative 8. Okay. Once you get your x right, then the question below 5.1.1 should be easy to answer using the knowledge of deduction formula and so on. Right? Any questions so far? Right, so let's move on to the next one. The next question says tan theta. Now this should be a piece of cake because you have got tan theta equal to y over x. And we know that our y is 15, our x, we just got it, it's negative 8, yes? So, um, when we have things like that, uh, since uh, CAP says we have... Uh, I don't know about the angle. Yes, yes. So, yes. Uh, yes. Um, so, so, we say like, have negative 8, then you put it like, and you see the angle that... Um, now we put I don't know about, yes. don't know about the acute angle. Yes, the acute angle. Okay. What you need to know is that that theta there, okay, it is acute. But the trigonometric ratios, they are on, we only use them generally for uh, 
sorry, it is it is obtuse rather. This theta is obtuse, but when you are using trigonometric ratios, it, it is what? We use theta as an acute angle. Now, every obtuse angle can be converted to a what? To an acute angle in trigonometry. Do you know? Any angle which is more than 90 degrees can be converted to an acute angle. Any angle. If I give you, say, an angle like, say, 280 degrees, and I say, write sine 280 as an acute angle, okay? We can write this, it's 280, it's in the fourth, in the, in the fourth part, right? so we can subtract what? This 280 from, from 360. Yeah. Remember that. And you can write this as minus sine what? 70 degrees. 80. Okay. Minus what? Sine 80 degrees. Yeah. Okay? So any angle can be written as an hour, as an acute angle. Okay? Make sure you are aware of that. So even though this is you know, choose angle. It can be written as an acute angle, and we can use our trigonometric ratios. And here, don't worry about the value of theta. Okay? Don't worry about the value of theta. The question, generally, questions like this, they rarely ask you to determine the value of theta. Okay? So let's find tan theta. Don't complicate things. Tan theta is equal to y over x. We know why it's given as 15. We have found x as what? Minus 8. So, so for 5.1.2, you just write tan theta is equal to y over x. But what is y? 15. What is x? Minus 8. You can write this as minus 15 over 8. You can stop here at 5. Okay? Now, do you remember that you told me that tan is negative in the second part? Mm -hmm. Do you see that this ratio is negative? Mm -hmm. Because point T is in the second part. So you must also ask yourself the question, does my answer make sense based on the given part? Okay? I can get a positive answer here when point T is in the second part. Okay? Because tan is what? Negative in the second part. I have to get a ratio which is negative. Okay, then 5.1.3. Now here you have to use your knowledge of, of reduction formula. Cos 180 minus theta. Use your knowledge of reduction formula first, then you use the given information together with the value of x you calculated in 5.1.1. Right? So for 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 5.1.2, sorry, 5.1.3. Let me open a new page. So that's 5.1.3. It's cos of 180 degrees minus theta. First, reduce that using your reduction formula. Now, it's your responsibility as a, as a learner to memorize the reduction formula. It's your responsibility to memorize the reduction formula. You are still young, your brain is still very fresh, and it is at its best. Okay, so this, now remember, if you, if you use the reduction, this will be minus cos theta. Okay, but this cos theta, we can write it in terms of x and r. Okay, so when there is cos theta, we can put minus open bracket x over what? Over r. What is x? x is minus 8. What is r? It's 70. I'm substituting now. Okay? Then, this minus and that minus will give you a positive. So the final answer is going to be positive 8 over 70. Okay? Positive 8 over 70. That's the final answer. So this is it's not as complicated as my side. It's so hard. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then 5.1.4, it says sine squared theta. 
find the value of sine theta and square that that answer. That's what it means, right? So 5.1.4. So let me do it here with a different color. So 5.1.4. It will be sine squared theta. Remember, sine squared theta is like that. Is the same as sine theta all squared. Okay? Don't forget that those two are the same. Then, in terms of x, y, and r, we know that sine theta is got y over r. Then you square that. What is y? It's 17. What is r? Sorry. y is 15. Okay? So that's 15 over 17. Then you, you square that. This will give you 225 over 289. And then you're done. It's not difficult, but you as an individual, you can make it difficult. If you know your formula, you know your basics, you shouldn't have any problems. Your heartbeat should not increase when you see a person like that. Okay? And the next one, let me draw this one. The next one it says the value of A. Now, the value of A. Now, this one now becomes a higher order question. Okay? The value of A is the value here. Okay? Now, to determine that, okay, you need to know that the x here is given as what? Minus 2. Okay? And we can find the size of this angle. We, okay? Using, using trigonometric ratios. Remember, the value of A here it's a y value. Mm -hmm. The value of a at p is a what? It's a, it's a y value. Since we now know the value of x, y, and r for the bigger triangle, we now know it. We can use those values of x, y, and r to find the size of theta here. Then use our knowledge of trigonometric ratios to determine the value of a. Okay? So what I'm going to do is it's your choice. You can use sine, you can use cos, you can use tan to determine the size of that angle. Right? Allow me to use what? Tan. It's my choice. What am I trying to do? I want to find the size of this angle here. Using any of those three trigonometric ratios. Because I know the values of x, y, and r. So I can use any one of them. So, I want you to be aware of this. We are going to use the bigger triangle to determine the value of that angle inside the triangle. Once we get that value, then we use the smaller triangle. In the smaller triangle, we can use the value of x together with the angle to get what? To get y. And our y is equal to a. Okay? If you want, you can give it a name, that is the triangle. I can call this point, say, s. It's your choice. You are allowed to do that. So that I can say in triangle OST. Okay? Then I'll calculate the value of L of S or T. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm. Okay? So let's do that. So in triangle OST, if I use trigonometric ratios, I'm going to have tan S or T is going to be equal to Y over X, remember? Okay, so that will be tan S or T is equal to what is Y? Our Y is what? 15. Don't forget that. And our X is what? Is what? Negative. Huh? Negative. Negative 8. Okay? Now, do you agree with me? This question here, there's more than one way of doing it. Okay. Right? From here, I can calculate the size of L or S or T, but I don't want to go via that way. What I'm going to do next, make sure you pay attention carefully. I'm going to write another ratio in terms of time. You see here, I've got the X value, but I don't have the Y value. Do you see that? Yes. I can, 
I can give a name to the smaller triangle. Since I've got P there, I can call this point point R. Okay? I can call it what? Point R. So that I can have another triangle which will be all P what? All P R. But those two triangles, the big triangle and the smaller triangle, they will have a common angle here. Am I right? Which means I can create two, two ratios that I can equate to solve for A. Yes? Okay. Generally, I, I hope you know that when you're writing your math paper 2, they provide you with the diagram. Yeah, they provide the diagram. You can you can label the diagram. Oh, so the uh, not the question paper. When you write math paper two, there's a special kind of booklet. Last year, when you wrote your end of examination, I'm the one who said your math. I I gave you a special answer booklet. In that special answer booklet, there were diagrams. Now listen, you are allowed to write on the diagrams inside the answer booklet. So are you setting it this year? Oh. Okay. Let me carry on. Let me carry on. I'm going to re-emphasize what I'm trying to do. I use the big triangle to determine the value of that angle. I can also use the small triangle to find the value of that angle, which means I can equate those ratios to solve for A. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yes. So, for the smaller triangle, I'm going to call it OPR. Okay? Let's do that. So I'm going to say in triangle, OPR, please, this is in triangle, put the triangle sign there. In triangle OPR, I can say tan, that would be tan, tan POR is equal to, is also equal to Y over X, but, but my Y has changed, it's not the same Y that I had in triangle OST. My, my Y is now equal to what? to A, and my X is now minus 2. Are you following that? Remember, remember, these two angles are equal. This angle here, POR, is also equal to SOT. Don't forget that. It's just that they are, they, the angle is being shared by two triangles. But those two angles are what? are equal, or rather it's the same thing. You're following that? Now, do you see that if the left-hand side is equal, I can equate the what? Then the right-hand side. So I'll say, therefore, 15 over minus 8 is equal to A over minus 2. Okay? Then I'll cross-multiply here. You cross-multiply, you're going to get Minus 30 equal to minus 8a. Okay, that will give me 30 equal to 8a. Then you divide both sides by 8, you get 15. 15 over 4. Yes? So, you don't try to go You don't try to go yeah. Okay. If if you decide to divide this tan SOT by tan POR, you must get an answer which is equal to one. Because remember, we say this angle and that angle are what? It would work too. Because tan SOT divided by tan POR will give you one. Then you divide these two together. If you simplify them, you are going to come back to them. Any question? Yes? You can't get a negative answer because, because of this. Because of this. We are in the second quadrant. 
In the second quadrant, is y positive or negative? Huh? It's not possible for a person like this to have your value of a being negative. It's not possible. Because y is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So point T is in the second quadrant, therefore the value of A has to be a positive answer. Okay? So when you're answering these questions on the, on the calculation plan, you must ask yourself, does my answer make sense or not? Okay? So this answer here is 100 percent that A is positive 50 nodes. Okay, any other question? Okay, so the Cartesian plane are okay for now. Uh, do me a favor, in the next coming days, find some time to go over your reduction formula, practice on your own at home. If you need more patience, just Wait, tell her. If you need more patience, just ask me, I will give you more questions. Okay, you just times minus 2 is what? Minus 30. Minus 8 minus a gives what? Minus 8 a. So the negative what? Cancel out. Okay. And then we divide both sides by 8. 8 and 30 have got a common factor. That's 2. 2 into 30, 15. 2 into 8. That's a 4. And then we are done. Okay. So that's the final one. Okay? Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay. All right, so here the question says simplify the power of power here. Now you need to go back to the basics of your reduction formula. Okay, you forgot your reduction formula, go back to grade 11 and refresh yourself. All right, so the first part, I'm just going to take you to the basics. You see this angle 120 which can be written using an acute angle. So we have to subtract 120 from 180. So we can write that as sine 180 degrees minus what? 60 degrees. I want you to be aware that this table that I'm writing here, I'm doing it for the sake of those who might have challenges to understand the next step after this. Okay? Well, I'm so only trying to do this step. Yes. Oh. It is fine. There is no mark allocated for this step. Okay. But it's a very important step because it helps you to minimize making what? Unnecessary mistakes. Then cos 210 can be written using 180 and 30 degrees. So that will be cos 180 degrees plus 30 degrees. I'm going to simplify this. Then tan 315 is in the fourth quadrant. So which number can you start subtract from 360 to get 315? 45. So that will be tan. 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. And then cos 27. Now cos 27, since we have got sine 63 in the denominator, we can convert the cos 27 to sine by using co-ratios. Or we can convert the sine 63 to cos what? 27. So I'm going to convert the cos to, to sine, so that will be sine 63. So, it's co-ratio. Who was your best teacher last week? Who? Huh? But men taught you this? Okay. Which, which part do you want me to explain? Okay, there is a formula which is called the core ratio. It's this one here. Let me write on top. There are actually two of them. Right? Sine theta is equal to cos 90 degrees minus theta. Also, cos theta is equal to sine 90 degrees minus theta. The core ratios are only used. For sine and what? Cos. And they are for, for acute angles. 
there are four acute angles. That is angles between zero and ninety. So if I give you sine twenty, okay, which angle can you add to twenty to get ninety? Seventy. If we start with sine twenty, with the next one, we will equate it to be equal to cos seventy. If I start with cos twenty, then cos twenty is equivalent to sine seventy. You can test it with your calculator. What is your calculator? Check out your calculator. What is sine twenty? What is cos seventy? So you, you can try it for any two angles that add up to 90 degrees. One must be a sine, the other must be a what? Cos. So here, 27 plus 63 gives us what? 90. So it means that cos 27 is equivalent to sine 63. Also, the sine 63 is equivalent to cos 27. Okay, all right. The denominator I can write that is sine 63 times. Now, cos 540, it's more than 360. So, subtract 360 from 540. You get what? You get 180. So, that will be cos 180, which is a special angle. Okay, so let's simplify now. Sine 180 minus 60, that will give you. Sine what? Sine 60. Cos 180 plus 30, that would give you minus cos 30. Then, tan 360 minus 45 should give you? Should give you? It's, it's two over tan. It would be negative tan 45 degrees. And then times sine 63. In actual fact, these two we can cancel them out. Yes. Let's cancel the, those two out because they are equivalent. Once we cancel them out, what is cos 180? What is cos 180? One. Minus 1. It's minus 1. Then, now I want you to know that in, a, in an examination situation, this is about 7 marks, right? There is no mark allocated for that step. You can do it in the head. The marks are allocated here. Right? You have to convert either the cost to sign for the co-ratio, one mark, one mark for sine 60, one mark for minus cost 30, one mark for minus tan 45, and one mark for the minus one. So total what? Five marks so far. You following? So, sir, you have to show us now. You have to show that. The, the use of correlation is just to show that. Yeah. You have to show that you converted the cost 27 to what? To sine 63. Yes? In that case, you don't want to know what the is. So, you can change the cost to change the sign. No, the objective is to cancel out, right? So, convert one of them either to sign or cost. Yes. So, if, if I left the cost 27 here, means I, I, had, I had to change this sine 63 to cos 27. You have to show that. Okay? So from here, sine 60, remember it's squared of 3 over 2 times. Now, because we have got this negative and that negative, they will give you a what? A positive. Okay? Cos 30 is going to be equal to square root of 3 over 2. Okay? You, you, you should know that from grade 10. You should know that from grade 10. Right? Tan, tan 45 is very easy equal to 1. Okay, but because I said the negative, the negative cancel out. So I'm going to put it as what? As a 1. Right? Unless, listen, unless you want me to put the minus here, then I'll put the minus here. Okay. So, 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 this was the yeah. Sine sixty. See what the square root of three over two. Special angles. Cos thirty. Square root of three over two. 
Yeah. Yes, you're supposed to memorize that. No, but they can't get it. What I can suggest to you is use the calculator wisely. Yeah. Because, 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 for sine 45 and cos 45, your calculator will say you do 2 over 2. But if you use special angles, that the calculator is 1 over square root of 2. Okay, so be very careful. Right? So from here, from here, you see that the denominator is a minus. Yes. Now, because of these two negatives and this minus in the denominator, our answer has to be negative. So, if I multiply square root of 3 times square root of 3, I will get a 3. Okay? If I multiply 2 by 2, I'm going to get a what? 2. A 4. Okay? But, listen, but because of this negative and that negative, these two cancel out, I'm left with 1. So the final answer must be a negative three over four. Sir, put all this up. The question says to simplify without using the calculator. You see, I can tell you this. From my experience, you learn under the tendency of using a calculator for this question. That's why you lose marks. Okay? A lot of learners will get this part right. This step right. Yeah. And get the five marks. This will be fine. So one, two, three, four, five marks. They are easy to, to get. But the total here is what? Yes. Now, for you to get the final two marks, you are not supposed to use the calculator. Okay? So you have to show this in the simplification, and then you will get all. So one mark for this, for the special angles, and for the values of the special angles, and one mark for the answer. And then you are done. Any question? Like if you don't have a question, then let's move on to the proof. Let's move on to the proof. Let's move on to the proof. Don't worry, we're going to look at the question in this past paper. For so that Friday, we will do every question. Don't worry. If you don't finish today, then in the next lesson, we will come to the Okay? Right. Allow me to carry on the world of time. Right. This one here, it's a proof. Okay? Prove the identity. Now, when you see that, it's an equation. So you must look at the left hand side and the right hand side. Which one is easier to simplify? The left hand side. Okay? The left hand side is simpler. So, you need to, to think how you will be able to carry on from there. Right? How you can be able to simplify until you get the right hand side. Your knowledge of algebra is required when you are doing a question like, uh, like uh, this one. So, first thing I'm going to write, left hand side is equal to 1 over cos theta minus cos theta over 1 plus sine theta. When you are doing these proofs, make sure you remember the following. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Also, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Those two fundamental identities, you have to remember them. Because in most cases, you need to use one of them or both of them. Okay? Also, be aware that the second one can be written in two other ways. By making sine squared theta the subject or by making cos squared theta the subject. Okay? So, so here, for me to carry on, I need to find the LCD. Okay? My LCD is going to be the product of cos theta and 1 plus sine theta. That's my LCD. So, 
I need to multiply this numerator by 1 plus sine theta. Okay? I need to multiply it by what? 1 plus sine theta. So if I do that, I'm going to get 1 plus sine theta. Okay? Minus. I have to multiply that numerator by by what? By 1 plus. By 1 plus what? So I multiply this one by 1 plus sine theta. So I need to multiply this cos theta by what? Cos. By cos. So, so that would be cos theta will be end up in cos squared theta. That's all over. Okay? That's all over. Now, if you look at it, you can write this as cos theta times 1 plus sine theta, like that. Now, someone might ask, then how is it going to be carried over there? It's very simple. Okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you can't cross multiply. What you do here is so, so either you can cancel both of this and that is cause. Which one? Cos theta. Listen, if you multiply if you multiply the cos per theta, right? I multiply the cos per theta. So the cos and the cos I got cos squared theta. Which means if if I'm to carry on, can I have your attention? If I'm to carry on, my suggestion would be you can convert this cos squared theta to, to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay? You, listen, you can also convert this one here to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Eh? What? You can convert this one here to sine squared plus it's, it's here. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, I know. Well, sorry. Huh? Yeah, me no, we are not so high. That's what's going on. So that's Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Two times. I mean, no, no, no. No, no. All right. Okay. Let's try this way. Can I have your attention? Let's say if we convert this one here to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Do you agree with me that the cos squared theta we create from here is going to cancel with that? No. Yes. No. <laughs> and listen, are you following? Yes. Okay, that's one way, right? Another way would be if we convert this cos squared theta to 1 minus sine squared theta, we may end up complicating the, the question, right? So, my suggestion is convert this 1 to sine squared theta plus what? Cos squared theta. So, our next step would be. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta minus, okay? Remember, I'm here, okay, wait. I'm here, plus, this what? This is squared theta plus sine theta minus cos squared theta. This is all over cosine of theta times 1 plus sine theta. You see that? Do you see that? Yeah. I converted this one to that. Do you see that? Why did I okay? Why did I do that? It's because if okay, if I want, I can also convert this cos cos squared theta to one minus 
It will also work. Listen, it will also work both of x minus. Right? So listen. So here we can cancel out this cos squared theta and that positive cos squared theta. Okay? If we do that, we can end up having we can end up having you see this sine squared theta plus that sine theta. So we can end up having sine squared theta plus sine theta over cos theta times one plus sine theta. Are you following that? Then in the numerator, I need to create a factor which is equivalent to one plus sine theta, which is easy now. So I can take out the common factor. If I do that, I'll get sine theta times sine theta plus one all over cos theta times one plus sine theta. Now, I want you to be aware that sine theta plus one and one plus sine theta, they are the same, okay? So these two will cancel out, and then you end up with sine theta over what? Cos theta, which is equal to five. Okay, so let's let's stop this.